Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Got a little sunshine there shining in on the window. Very glad that you're here with me today in our class today. We're going to be doing a holiday 3D blender. Let's make a 3D snowman. So very glad that you're here with me this afternoon. Let me introduce myself in case you haven't been in one of my classes. My name is Alex Cooper. I teach the computer classes for the Columbia County Library uh, in Evans, Georgia, Harlem Library, and also Ooch Creek, now our new Growtown Library building. Yay. <laughs> Beautiful new building in Growtown. So come stop buying everything now. We're not doing any on-ground classes or anything like that, so we're doing all our classes virtually with the other things like story time virtually and stuff like that. So check our website for more of our virtual classes and stuff. So very glad that you're here today. We're going to be doing a fun one, making 3D. We're trying to be, as we did with uh, Thanksgiving, try to do some uh, turkey themed projects and stuff with our STEM learning and programming and stuff. So now we're going to do, a, um, do some projects with Blender a little bit, which is a free 3D creation software. But as uh, we always say at the beginning of class, uh, welcome to class. And feel free to post any questions here in the chat that you may have, okay? I always want to start with how can I help, okay? What questions do you have and how can I help? Maybe I move up a little bit. <laughs> nope, light still wants to shine on me a little bit, but that's okay. All right, so let's go ahead and let's talk about some of our upcoming classes that we have going on. And we also have uh, our classes for tomorrow is the 10th. So we're going to be doing in the morning, 11 o'clock, we're going to be doing a holiday coding with Python Digital Snowflakes. So come join me for that. And then tomorrow afternoon, a very important class, we'll be talking about cutting the cable basics of cord cutting. And I'll also be talking about, about a lot of the big changes that are happening and see what some of the options are with a lot of our services. Some of our services prices are going up, sometimes as much as $10. So we'll be talking about that and come join me. Uh, for that class, we'll also be talking about antennas, setting that up and everything. Some of our, even our live streaming is actually losing some of our local channels like uh, WJBF and stuff. And even Dish Network is even losing that channel. So, so how can you get those channels? Well, you can get them with an antenna. Now this week, this excuse me, this month, we only have three weeks of classes. And then next week, we'll be doing a Raspberry Pi project with some LEDs and stuff. That project may be subject to change. I've actually had some issues of setting up some certain software for that. So if we don't do that project, we'll be doing a different one, okay? And then join us on the 16th, which we'll be doing our digital snowflake in the morning, kind of uh, encompassing all three of our holiday classes here. Uh, digital snowflakes on the 16th. Afternoon the 16th, we'll be doing on our Columbia County um, in Evans. A Facebook page will be doing a Facebook live gadget help now if I don't get many questions with the gadget help then I'll start talking about uh, a lot of our free library sources like Libby which I'm about to talk about briefly and on the 17th we're going to be doing our blender let's make a snowman class again in the morning and then in the afternoon we'll be doing our blender animate a snowman snow scene which will be like a car driving through uh, so that'll be really fun. So the idea of the blender classes is that we'll be able to make characters like we're going to do and then we'll actually be able to animate um, some of our scenes and stuff. So we'll learn that in our other class there. If you're looking for free ebooks and free digital audiobooks, do you realize you can get those free through the, your library? All you need is your library card. Don't search for when it says what library you with. Don't say Columbia County. Don't say um, Grovetown, don't say Harlem, say Greater Clarksville Regional Library System, and then choose Georgia Download Destination. Put in your library card and you'll be good to go. Fantastic new service that started on October 1st, and of course it's free through our library. A little side note, our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Curbside Holds Pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details 
or call the library with questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Right now we're having a subscribe drive, so if we can hopefully get 100 subscribers to our YouTube channel, then we can actually get our own customized YouTube address. Or you can search YouTube for GCHRL videos and our channel will pop right up. All right, so let's go back here, and I shall appear. Hello, hello. So we do a lot of stuff with our Raspberry Pi and uh, Raspberry Pi classes and everything, and this is actually a project that we're actually brought. This is actually a two-part project. First, we're gonna create our snowman. Oh, let me, let me, uh, let me backpedal here. Let's talk about Blender a little bit first. Blender is free software that you can download, and I will load that real quick. And all you got to do is it's on, it's on Blender.org. It's free to download and install. It's completely free software. It's by I believe it's a nonprofit organization that does this. If if not, it's just free software. And we'll be talking about a lot. I won't go into it too much. Talking about some maybe some future classes, things we'll do. It actually, of course, has some animation, which is what we'll be doing our last class of the month, so come join me for that. But they also have a lot of tutorials on here, and I'll point that out as well. And it has everything you need to, to need on there. Lots of small films use this software uh, to create visual effects and everything. Animation, 3D, it even do, does some 2D, 3D animation, make your own. So today we're just going to kind of do a few projects here. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Now, if we go to the training and tutorials, they have some free tutorials on here, kind of beyond what we're we're going to be covering today. Uh, completing a beginner tutorial, getting around a little bit, and also some animation fundamentals and stuff like that right on their website. Okay, so I encourage you to do this. And also, these are some projects that I personally wanted to start working on. I recommend you use the, the getting started with Blender fundamentals first because that kind of gets around talking about using um, in their YouTube videos talks about using the interface introductions to it things that you can do meshes everything like that and that even goes beyond one of the stuff that we cover or be covering today with shading and everything so let's just kind of have fun learn together like I said uh, so all you need is that software first Download it and let me go back here. Let's go back up the top. It's just blender.org. Okay. All right. Now that we posted that, let's talk about our two projects. So, our first project is we're going to create our snowman, and there's our handout there. And then our part two. I'm going to go ahead and post that in there to make sure y'all have it. it. Is actually giving color to our snowman, so he won't be gray anymore. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. And like I said, we're going to we're going to do the different steps together. All right, so this is projects.raspberrypi.org, and I have the link in there. So this is actually what we're going to be creating. A little bit of a 3D snowman. Now, we're actually going to be adding the, the coal, um, I guess you'd say, buttons for him on there as well. Uh, for his, uh, I guess, buttons for his jacket and stuff. And the reason we're going to be doing that is because in the color... Uh, giving him color. One of the things we'll be doing is uh, we'll be color giving color to that and also giving him eyes as well. So our project will include um, adding the eyes and also doing the buttons as well because the other one has that in it. Okay, so we'll be ready for our next one. Let's go ahead and let's get started here. And I'm going to disappear so you can just hear the sound of my voice. Now I actually recommend basically having me or my video maybe in a separate device so that you can be 
here at your computer and also flip back and forth as well. So let's go ahead and start talking. And I'm gonna read what's on the screen as well to kind of help with learning. And I should be able to make it a little bit bigger. There we go. So welcome to Blender. We're gonna create a 3D model of a snowman using Blender. And this is basically what our finished work will look like. So let's talk about what we're gonna learn, okay? We're gonna learn about this project here, 2D, 3D design, what will we need? Just a laptop computer with the Blender software available on it. And if you do need, there's a printer-friendly version of this project as well. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna start Blender. So it's loading. And I'll flip back and forth. We're actually gonna be choosing a general file. Okay, and it's gonna start off with giving us a nice square, okay? So let's open Blender. For this tutorial, we won't need the splash screen, so click the right splash screen. We just click General. To create a snowman, we won't need a cube. Instead, we need to add a ball or a sphere. So remove the cube by selecting the cube, pressing X, and then press Enter. Now also, I can do a little right click on it and say Delete as well. Now let's talk about working with our navigation a little bit here. I'm only gonna teach you basically just what, what you'll need to know for the project, okay? If you wanna venture out more, then you can do that. But we're mostly just gonna focus on project-based learning so we don't get bogged down with a whole bunch of learning menus and stuff. So here's our cube right here. The big thing is we want to look around now, don't we? So the way they have here is it actually represents 3D space. Now, if you've done any of my stuff with um, uh, the Scratch program, we'll talk about y-axis, axes, and of course our uh, X and everything. This is basically how we turn around because it's full 3D. We have a Z as well, okay? So what you basically need to do is take your mouse, move it up here, and then press and hold. You can grab the the X, Y, or Z, and that actually will turn it on that axis, okay? And you can move, left click hold there, move your mouse around. So there's not really, I really like this interface because instead of me having to choose here, then go over here, choose, it basically is we go to the menu item, left click hold, we wanna zoom in and zoom out, we get our mouse, put it on top of the, the magnifying glass, left click hold, and then move our mouse up and down and that is our zoom. So instead of worrying about a whole bunch of different buttons, that allows that. Now if we wanna move our, our move left or right or replace else, here's our hand. So left click hold, and then you can kind of move this way. Now what is this right here? This is actually our camera, okay. Whoop. Got a hover over on the hand. And we also have some other stuff we're not gonna be talking about too much. We click that, that actually shows our camera view, okay? A little bit we'll talk about uh, render, render and everything, but if we go up here and we click the Z, that shows it from the top, there's the camera there. I mean the, yeah, the Z, if we hit Y, it's gonna show it from the other angle, there's the camera, and if we hit X, it's gonna show it from another angle. But remember, take your mouse, hover here, and then you can move around in the 3D space and you can see where the camera is, okay? So if you need to zoom out, left click hold there, drag up and down, go back here in the middle. So it actually helps pretty easy uh, to get moving around, okay? Now, how do we select things? Well, this is kind of our main default. It's a square, it's our select box. We basically can draw a box, let go, and everything in that area can be selected or we can just left click it and it should select it as well. One of the ways we know we selected something is because up here it'll be highlighted as well, okay? Now, we won't go into the rest of the stuff. Let's go ahead and jump in here and let's start, we're gonna talk about saving and then we'll jump in here and start making our, our, our pieces, okay? So how do we save something? We go up to file, 
We have our classic, just like if you're using Word. Here's new, here's open, and here's save or save as, okay? All we do is we hit save, and the window should pop up, and then maybe just call our project. I, I think it does that. I'm, I'm gonna hold off on that, because it may walk us through saving here in a second. So that's really our main things we need to know to be able to view our, our project and get around a little bit. So let's jump in here. So first we need to remove the cube. So make sure it's selected by left clicking on it. Now they're actually talking about using the uh, key on the keyboard X, but I'm actually just gonna right click on the cube and then you'll see something that says delete. I'm gonna left, cl uh, left click delete, okay? I'm, big on, I'm not huge on learning um, a lot of keyboard shortcuts because it's something I can't really show um, too much, okay? Uh, there will be something here that we will have to learn a keyboard shortcut to be able to move things around. So our next part is we need to add a sphere, okay? So let's click Add, drop down menu on the left corner of the 3D view. It'll say Add. We're going to choose mesh and choose the one that says UV sphere. Okay. So right here it says add mesh. You can see there's lots of different shapes and everything. Mesh. And we're going to choose the one that says UV sphere. Okay. And then boom, we got a sphere, don't we? We can zoom in on our sphere and we can also get a little bit of a preview of what the camera will view. So that's our camera, remember? So let's click our camera button and boom, so it's right in the middle of what the camera is viewing. And there you go, right there. Whoop. All right, so let's go back. By adding the UV sphere, we've created a nice round bottom for the snowman. see what it looks like we're going to press F12 or we're going to click render your image okay so let's go ahead and do that now do you see up here where it says render let's click render and let's click where it says render image which is F12 on the keyboard if we want to now it's going to pop up in another window and I have to drag it over so just give me a moment so that's exactly what our camera sees there's our shape And there's the bottom part for our snowman. Now to close this, let's hit the X right there. And again, remember, that's what our camera is going to see. Okay. All right. Now as we go down, the snowman's bottom looks a bit too small. So let's resize the UV shape. Hit escape to, uh, we just viewed the render. Make sure the UV sphere and scale tool in the left panel Okay, it's selected. Then use the blue, green, and red handles to resize it. Okay. You'll probably notice that it's hard to get a proper shape using the handles. It might end up looking like a big egg. So if I go here to the scale, okay, I click scale. Make sure you have it selected. You'll see you're going to scale it. And if I drag this, oh no, it's a weird shape. How do I undo? We have our classic edit undo's right there. So don't forget the undo is there. Here's another area, the blue. Oh no, it stretched it too high. Edit undo. And then about this green one. Oh no, it stretched it too much. Edit undo. Okay. So let's go back to our section here. It might end up looking like a giant egg, for example. However, there is always a way to do this. First, remove the UV sphere and add this. That's because uh, I don't know why it doesn't tell us to do undo. So we're going to do edit, click edit, then undo so we have our sphere again. Make sure your mouse in the 3D view and the new UV sphere is selected. Then press the S. Now you can uniformly resize the UV sphere by dragging the mouse. Okay. So now, 
if I have it selected, I'm going to hit S on the keyboard, and then I'm in this mode where I can kind of automatically, you know, change the size. Okay. And let's look at our camera. Okay. Now, uh, let's see. Give me one second. Let me check something. Animation. All right, so vertex select. Okay, so we have our shape now. You can change size of it. Now, one big thing about drawing or creating something, a lot of the times they say when you're you know trying to draw something and you'll even see famous artists talk about this try to draw general shapes okay circles uh, squares rectangles things like that even when they start to people you'll see someone draw like a famous cartoon character or something they usually start off with like a, sh a circle or a shape in the background and build from there okay all right so uh, we change the size of it okay and then let's look at our camera angle. There we go. And also now we can look at our render if we want to, which we haven't really done anything. It's just a little bit smaller now. I made ours a little smaller. They always want to make theirs bigger just so that it will be still in frame and everything. If the sphere looks too big, resize it again by pressing S and then dragging the mouse to resize it appropriately, for example. All right, so let's go ahead and let's add their snowman's head. Now we need to hit a head for the snowman. Add another UV sphere. If it looks like no new spheres are has appeared, don't worry. You might oh, hang on, I'm skipping a step here. We need to click Add and then UV sphere, just like we did before. Okay. So we click. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. So if we go add, same thing, mesh, UV sphere, might be a little bit bigger. Now one of the things is we need to resize it again, don't we? So let's click S on our keyboard and we can resize it. Now it might seem like it's inside of there, okay? So we actually need to move it. So let's talk about that. If it looks like no new sphere has appeared, don't worry, you might not be able to see it yet because it was added inside the snowman's bottom. <laughs> we need to drag it out. Select the move tool for the left menu. Okay. Drag the sphere out using the blue handle, the Z axis, which will move it all the way up, and place it on top of the other sphere. It should look similar to this. Okay. All right, so let's go to our move tool, which is here. Let's grab the blue and it should drag it up. There we go right there. So now we have two on top of each other. If we do our camera mode, we can see it's starting to look more like a snowman, isn't it? Uh, we can make it a little bit bigger, I think. I think that'll be okay. Yeah. All right, so let's choose that one. We're going to move it up. OK, 
Head's a little small, isn't it? Go back to our scale, hit the letter S, and make it larger, but not too large. Uh, let's see. I think that'll do pretty good. Let's do our render. Because our camera's there. So we want render. I don't know why, but when I move the uh, thing over here, it actually cuts off the top of this head for some reason. But anyway, there we go. Okay, so now we've got our snowman going on. Now one of the things we want to make sure is that we are dealing with what the camera will see. So I'm actually going to, uh, wait, wait, what do I want? I'm gonna try to place my, 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 uh, my view kind of according to what the camera will see, even though I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. So I'm gonna kind of get there. So when we do our, cam our nose and everything, it'll be right there. Okay, so let's go to our next part. The head may look a little too big, so let's shrink it down. Remember, select the shape and then press S on the keyboard. All right. So we can drag him up and down by grabbing the blue because it's right on top of each other, okay? It might not uh, stick into the snowman's bottom in the right position. Move the head into the, the bottom using the handles, okay? Check what it looks like by rendering the image. Now I think our snowman looks pretty... Oh, hold on. I think our snowman looks pretty good in shape right now. Mm-hmm. And we did our zoom, so we actually have a pretty good angle here of exactly what, whoop, I don't know what I do. Oh no. Oh no, what did I do? Okay. Why is my zoom not working? Well, I'm inside the shape for some reason. Okay. Okay, what have I done? Uh. <laughs> okay. Okay, I don't know what it is. I got stuck or something. Anyway, so let's get back to the view we were at. Where is it? There it is. There we go. Okay, so let me zoom in. All right, so let's go to our next part. Oh, I did forget the saving. So, of course, if I do File, go up here, click Save, and this will pop up, and then I can call it something like, uh, I don't know why it's so small. Click here and we'll call it snowman. All right, and then at the top it should have a name on it, snowman two. Okay, snowman's nose. Usually the snowman's nose is made of a carrot. We'll use a cone for it. So let's go to the add drop down menu and select cone from the mesh selection, okay? So the cone will probably be added inside the bottom again, so we'll have to move it. So use the blur, the blue move handle to move it up, and it sh then we actually need to resize it, okay? The cone might look too big to be the nose, 
So you need to resize it. Resize the cone either using the shortcut key S or the scale tool, okay? Uh, which might be a bit harder or handier, excuse me, handier for this purpose. After you have uh, resized the cone, use the move tool to shift it into the side of the snowman's head, just where the nose should be, okay? And then it's gonna turn up, talk about turning it or the, using the rotation tool, all right? So let's go to that point. So let's do add mesh and we want cone. And you see it's kind of large. So I want to move down that way. So let's go to our move tool. There's our move. And we want to make sure you grab the blue and it'll drag it up. And now it's kind of like a big hat. Okay, like a big hat. And I'm going to change my view a little bit here. So I actually want to... Let's see, which one should I use? Okay, that's... Hmm. Not really what I want. Let's see, was that what I want? Yeah, I think that's more what I want. And I want to turn it. So rotate, and then we grab the different shapes here, or the different colored lines is really what we're doing. And look, look at it a lot, okay? And I'm looking at it, the camera view, okay? So I'm actually going to, we rotated it, we need to move it, go back to move. Oh, is that what that, huh? Support to me for your T for transform. Give resize. Okay, so we want to move it. No. Got to grab the green. Move it that way. And I'm going to change my view a little bit. Don't forget to hit the edit undo if you're having problems. Okay. I'm going to grab this blue and move it down. Let's see. How's, okay, so we're doing okay. Maybe a little bit more that way. All right, now we're going to resize it. So let's go to scale and let's hit S on the keyboard. It's going to allow us to make it smaller because we want it to be his news. All right, let's go back to the move. See if we can move it back to the face. And let's do the view so we know. Look at our camera angle too. Okay, there you go. It looks pretty good. And I might actually move it a little bit that way. There you go. Okay, now look and see is there any space? Yes, there is space in between. So I need to move it this way. So you'll see it touching. See? Now you don't see it, so now it's it's done its job. So there's his little nose sticking out. Not really perfect if I moved it down, maybe. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Okay, so there's his nose. And I'm I think it actually looks a little strange. I'm gonna go the scale. And I'm actually going to squish it a little bit. There you go. So it looks a little bit longer. More like a carrot, I guess. And I may move it up. There you go. I think that works pretty good. Let's set our camera. Oh, it didn't squish it evenly. Of course it didn't. So try to get this angle here. Go back to scale. There we go. Kind of like, looks more like a piece of candy corn, to be honest. But it'll do the job. All right, so now we have a nose. If we look at our camera angle, so now he has a nose. All right. So we turned it. We rotated it. You'll see arcs 
or little curves that you can use to manipulate the shape of the nose. Use the curve red, blue, and green that will allow you to rotate the nose in the direction you want, for example. Okay, it's kind of what issue we were having. Switch back to the move tool, position the nose properly inside the blue, green, and red handles. Now render and check how the snowman looks. Is the nose proportion, um, proportioned properly? Does your model resemble a snowman? So we have our angle. And let's look at our render. And when I move it over here, it does this weird shape thing. Anyway, so there he is. We have a big shadow, which we'll mess around with our lighting later. But I think that looks pretty good. Um, looks a little bit more like a beak, doesn't it? But that's okay for this project. All right, so go to our next part. Let's do our snowman's hat. Now let's add a hat to our snowman. The hat will be made from a cylinder. So let's do add a cylinder from the add drop down menu, the mesh section. The cylinder might, might be added using the UV sphere. So once again, use the blue handle to move it upwards, okay? So we go add mesh and this time we choose where it says cylinder okay cylinder all right so let's hit cylinder oh it looks like uh, I don't know he's like in a big round cup or something I don't know all right so let's do move and let's grab the blue so it'll be perfectly moved up directly kind of kind of on his head a little bit and of course we need to resize it. So let's go to our, click our scale button and let's hit S on the keyboard. And this allow us to perfectly resize it. I think that looks pretty good. And then let's do our move, grab the blue. Eh. So I think it looks kind of tall, okay. Uh, it's kind of small now, doesn't it? All right, so scale, let's hit S. What about that? Yeah, I think it looks kind of like a hat. It's a funny hat, but it looks kind of like a hat. Oh, I did, uh, I might do a little extra here because last time, I actually speculated that I could actually make the cylinder look like it's a little bit of a brim. So I'm actually going to do that real quick. I'm going to hit add mesh cylinder, but this time I'm going to move it up right about there and I'm going to resize it. So to scale resize it just a little bit. I'm gonna have to move it around a bunch. Still too brimmy. Still too big. Just enough to be. And then if I, uh, where is it? Yeah, so the scalar, and then if I did this, and then moved it up, it should be, ah, there you go, it does look a little bit of a brim. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I just thought it made it look a little bit better. Okay, so let's go ahead to our next part here. You can't, you can do that or not. If you don't want to, that's okay. 
So let's look around, give me a little bit of a brim to his little hat. Now let's let's look at what we got. So let's resize the cylinder, which we did. Moved it towards his hat. Hit S on the keyboard to resize it. So there you go, there's your big render. Okay, now for our next project, we're not gonna add arms, but we actually need to add eyes, okay? And we'll also, I'll show you a trick to do by doing uh, copy paste to make sure that all our, all our little circles there are the right size, okay? So we need to add our eyes, and then we need to add our buttons. We're not gonna add the arms, okay? But we'll do the buttons. Let's go ahead and do that. I think the brim looks pretty good. So I actually kind of recommend taking a little bit extra step than doing the brim. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing. There's still round circles. So we're gonna do, I'm gonna hit uh, File, Save. So if I do Add, Mesh, UV Sphere. Now remember it's gonna be inside uh, the body there. So I need to do Move to move it up. And then I need to do Scale or the S on the keyboard to rescale it. I want it to be pretty small. And then let's do our move. Now I'm gonna have to change my view here. So if I line it up right about there, remove that. Yeah, perfect, okay. So if I go to my move, And put one, put it right about there, and then let's go back to our other axes here. So I'm going to grab the blue and move it down. Oop, too much. Right about there, I think. Now let's see our other angle. Grab the green, and you should see it go in there a little bit. So it is now connected to the head. All right, now I want to make the same size. So the easiest way to do that is I have it selected. I'm gonna right click, okay? And do you see where it says duplicate object? You can do this with Shift D, duplicate object. And then I'm gonna tell it, oh, I've got it hovering. And then I wanna move it into place and click, left click. All right, now let's look and see if that's where we want it. Eh, pretty good. All right, let's look at our angle. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, now I'm gonna do the selection. Make sure I have it selected. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna duplicate object. Okay, now I kind of have it out and about and I actually want it to be a button. Okay, and I can't see it right now, so I need to move, move it out. Let's move around a little bit here. I think I need to use the green. There we go. And these look a little bit too, whoop, it looks a little bit too big right now, okay? So I'm actually gonna shrink it down. Let's go to scale, hit S, and then we're gonna make it a little bit smaller. There we go. Okay, now, basically, just take your time here. I'm gonna use the move tool a lot. I want it to be kind of on the same line as the nose. Okay, now let's go ahead and let's do the same thing. Let's duplicate this and put one here and one down there, okay? So right click, duplicate object, and I think right about there should be pretty good. All right, right click, duplicate object, and I get it again. All right there, so it's buttons on his coat. All right, now let's look around. 
Uh, they're too much inside his belly. And it looks like I'm going to have to make um, move the whole thing up. He's a little bit low right now. Okay. So I'm actually going to grab the green and make that move out a little bit. All right. I'm going to choose the other one. There we go. Move the green out a little bit. There we go. So he has buttons on his jacket. And the whole thing is kind of... Um, uh, pointed down so I'm actually going to choose everything the whole selection tool and go to move and then grab the blue it should move him up a little bit there we go okay now let's look at our view here look at our camera angle so now how do we change our camera angle so if we click our camera, okay, and you see the move here, okay. I'm trying to remember what was the easiest way to do this last time. Because it doesn't want you to just click there and then move like that because it's still like on selection. I think I actually have to go over here. Let's see. Yeah, I think I went over here and I actually moved it up. I'm trying to remember how to do this because when we do our render he's actually gonna oh man oh man okay so hold on let me undo all that okay I gotta move that back in place all right so drag it down and then let's see yeah, bring it up a little bit more. All right, now do our camera. Let's see. Nope, it's not showing the camera mode. Oh man, how did I do this last time? Uh, Okay, okay, that's the sphere. Oh, duh, I go up here and I choose camera. And then it allowed me to change the location and everything. So, my camera, let's zoom in, zoom out. Okay, that was it. So click camera here, and then you can actually change to move it up if you need to. Okay. So to fix our camera view, there it is right there. So now when we do render, we can actually see that our snowman our snowman is in full frame okay and basically that's our snowman now in a second we're going to give him some color and then basically oh add a scarf they don't even show that how would you add a scarf I'm trying to think about that if you took a 
sphere and squished it around, maybe. Maybe it looked like he kind of has something fat on around his neck. All right, so let's go ahead. So we finished our first part of our project. So let's go ahead to now our second part. Let's add color to our Mr. Snowman. So when we finish this, this is what our snowman should look like. Okay, we'll give him a green hat and make him white, let it snow, and then black eyes for cold, black buttons. Oh, he has four buttons, but anyway. And then we'll give him uh, an orange nose, okay? Let's talk about what we're going to learn. We're going to learn about this project covers elements from the following. Uh, this project right here. Of course, what we'll need, just our computer running Blender. And it has some other stuff here. And this is one that goes into more detail or it's a printer friendly version. Okay. Now, I will tell you this. In uh, the UK or Great Britain, they don't say, they don't spell it C-O-L-O-R. They spell it col color. Okay, that way, or color, however you want to say it, but it's still color. So do realize that if you do see that, they just spelled a little bit differently, but uh, most of our programming languages are actually created here in the United States or programs like Photoshop or anything like that. So if you do see just kind of the normal uh, color, there you go right there. Okay, so it does have a starter project, which is located right here. But because we already created a character previously, we can use the same one, okay? So on his head, the snowman has a hat. Let's try and make it green. If you look at what the camera sees, the snowman looks entirely gray, for example, okay? The color of the snowman, we need to add uh, some materials to the model. So there's our rent, our current render that we just looked at a minute ago. We're going to select the hat and select material properties from the menu on the right panel. Okay. So let's go there. So we should see that we have uh, several sections over here. You can actually click them and it will show that it's been highlighted. So the cylinder is actually his hat. Okay. Now, because I do have a brim, I will actually create for both of those, okay? So we click the cylinder for the hat. It's going to say, then select the material properties icon in the menu on the right panel, material properties, which is like uh, down here, let's see. There it is, material properties. It looks kind of like a sphere. Add a new material by clicking the new button in the material, say green hat, by typing in the name in the box. So we're going to say new. It's going to say, what do you want to call it? And I'm actually going to call it race what's there, green hat. Okay. Okay, below go to the base color and click on the white box. Okay. And the color palette will appear where you can change and select it to be green. So if we go down here where it says base color, the white box, let's left click that. A whole uh, spectrum of color choices has now appeared. Let's go ahead and go to our green. I want to be kind of a, you know, a robust green, I guess. Hmm. Okay. I'm 
think that does a good job right right about there. I think that would be good. Okay. So we choose our color now it shows green. The color choices might look too bright green for your liking. If you would prefer a darker green, you can decrease the amount of intensity. So if I click here and you have this, but you also have this section as well. If we hover over, it'll say intensity. So I can do this and it'll darken it. So now it's kind of a little bit more of a dark green. I think that looks good. Select the base color again by clicking. Okay, we just did that. Drag that down. Render your image to see what it looks like. Okay. So let's look at our render. Render image. And now when we look, he actually has a green hat. Okay. So we did that. <laughs> Okay, now, uh, there is a view here. Let me remember where that is. Okay, so you can actually change your view here. So it'll be like that. Shading, and there's even one here that shows viewpoint shading. So if you want it to be, you know, kind of show what the color something is, just realize you have the wireframe the basic shading is which we have it on and I'm zoom in a little bit here and then you can actually choose this one right here that says viewpoint shading and it'll show what color you've chosen uh, for the object okay all right now you can see the snowman now has a green hat exit which we rendered and then let's click where it says viewpoint shading button and then we can see it all the time okay in this step you'll you'll uh, be coloring an eye select one of the eyes by clicking on it you can make sure that the eye is selected by checking whether it's an orange boulder surrounding it or not okay the border excuse me boulder border <laughs> surrounding it as with the hat, go to the materials property in the tab right handed panel and press new and create a new material for the eye and let's name it coal. Okay. So let's click the eye. If it's selected, it should look like that. When it's selected, make sure you're here on the material properties. Click new. Let's type in coal as the name. Okay. And then let's go down here where it says base color. Click there. And we're going to drag it all the way down to where it looks like it's black. Okay. And then we should see it change if we if you have it set to the viewpoint shading. Okay. Now, of course, if we do our render, it should now uh, look like it's a black eye. All right, now change the base color. There's the black eye. To color the other eye in each of the buttons, you could go through the whole process by adding a new material for each. But this would be quite cumbersome. It's much easier to reuse the material that you have already made. So let's reuse the coal material to color the eye and the buttons. Okay. So let's select the other eye, go to material properties tab. Instead of selecting new, click the material selection, and now we should see where it says coal and green hat. Okay. Select coal from the material we created earlier. Repeat this process for each of the snowman's buttons. Select a button, then click on the materials properties tab to select the cold material. Render your image again 
you will see that the snowman now has black buttons and black eyes. All right. So let's choose the other eye. And we go to our material properties part. And there's a little drop down right here. And we have coal, green hat. So let's click coal. All right. Let's click the other button here. Drop down coal. Drop down coal. Drop down coal. Okay. Now remember we actually created a brim too, didn't we? So I'm actually going to do an extra thing here. Click the brim. And I'm going to do the drop down and choose green hat. Boom. And then we have a nice green hat, don't we? Now let's go ahead and look at our render. So now he has a nice brim. There's the coal eyes. He looks still kind of gray, doesn't he? But what else are we missing? Who well, doesn't have color? I'm going to hit File, Save. Very good. All right, now let's color the nose. The snowman's nose will be orange. As you don't yet have an orange material, you will need to make a new color. Select the nose. Go to the Material Properties tab. Select New to create a new color. Okay. Give the material a name, for example, carrot. And then let's choose an orange. Select base color and pick a nice orange color. If necessary, drop the intensity to create a nice carrot-like shade. That does not look like a carrot-like shade at all, does it? We'll try to do a little better. So let's choose our carrot. Make sure we're on the materials properties. Let's hit new. And we're going to call it carrot. Okay. Now let's go down here to the color. Let's click there and let's see if we can find a nice orange. Mm. We can change the intensity of it. Okay, I think that'll work. Okay, I think that works pretty good. All right, so what you think? It should be a little brighter. Let's see if we make it a little brighter. All right, so let's go ahead and let's click render. Alright, so let's click render. Change my zoom. And there's our snowman. <laughs> Alright, so now we actually need to go back here. He looks still kind of gray, doesn't he? Okay. Let's go ahead and let's let's talk about changing the body color. And then we're going to go a little bit extra here. We'll talk about our camera um, with our, we'll talk about our lighting a little bit, okay? So when you're in 3D view, you will notice that the spheres make up the bottom and the head of the snowman are gray and not white. Oh. See if you can use what you've learned to color the snowman's head and body weight white to make the color white you need to drag the dot all the way to the top to make it that way okay a good snowy white so let's select the body make sure that you're on 
material properties, choose new, and let's call it snow. Oh, I gotta click there. Snow. Click right there. Let's make sure to drag that all the way to the top. And let's see what it looks like now. Ah, all right, now let's click the other body part, the bottom as the British said, and make sure that you're on material properties, click the drop down, and instead of carrot, coal, green hat, let's choose snow, and then boom. All right, now let's look at our render. There we go right there. <laughs> he looks great, but it's a little bit of shadow going on, isn't it? Okay. Now again with this render, um, I do want you to know that you can actually save your image. So you do save as here. It'll actually pop up and you can actually choose which format you want. Uh, it will do JPEG and it will do the PNG format and the other ones as well. Okay. So there's your snowman. That's the picture you will get. It's what it'll render. You can save it as a picture file. Okay. So now that we've actually finished our project here, it, whoop. as we finished our project here, let's talk about lighting a little bit. Okay. So let's kind of play around with our lighting. So we know where our camera is, okay? We've also seen our render a little bit too. And if we talk about our lighting some. Now, the last time I did this, I think we can actually add, where is it? We can add a light. We can add the sun, a point, and I haven't gone into too much detail about this. Let's see. Let's see. Add a light object to this. Let's see. So point. Add a light object to the scene. I'll need directional point light source. Let's see. Add a light object to the scene. Sun. Constraint directional parallel ray of light. Okay. Spot, add a light object to the scene, spot, directional cone light, shape, and area. Let's see what area looks like real quick. So, <laughs> oh, there's our light source right there. Oh, okay. Well, hold on a second. I'm going to undo adding the area light. Oh, when I add the area, I'm going to look at it real quick. So if I add the area light, and I think it puts it near the camera. Let's look at that render and see what that looks like. Eh, looks about the same, doesn't it? I may actually have to mm, if I move that out there, what does that look like? Okay, I'll have to work on that one a little bit. Okay, so let's do undo. So I'm gonna choose this light here. You can do it on the I want to go back one more so it's that area light hasn't been added yet. All right, so let's click where it says light, okay? Now, I can actually move the light around, which is really what I wanna do, because I feel like there's a bit of a shadow with my camera. So if I click here, and I'm actually gonna drag, I have move selected, let's move it over here, and then let's look at our render and see what that looks like. Aha! That looks a lot better now, doesn't it? Do you remember before? 
see that big shadow that we have on his face and now that we've moved it over here there we go that's a little bit more than what we kind of expected to get okay now what have we learned today we've learned a lot because um, the big thing is that uh, making our shape so you could pretty much make anything you wanted to uh, just by using some of the basic shapes here I do know that uh, last uh, month we did some stuff with the turkeys and we drew our own turkey just basically using some shapes you could probably draw a 3d turkey if you wanted to And the big part of this project really was just to kind of be an introduction, you know, to 3D modeling a little bit, Blender, and also kind of, you know, your beginner part. I, is one thing, oh, I don't want to do that. Hold on. <laughs> Perfect. We won't delve into that. But right now we have our main colors. We have our little snowman on here. I think it look, we're looking pretty good here. I really like the render that we, we're creating now since we actually moved the light over. There he is right there. And I really like the little brim of his hat. I really feel like that really makes uh, the scene, I guess you could say. Now, let's play around with our, our light a little bit more, and then we'll start to um, finish up class here. So we have a sun. We switch it to sun. And I'm going to zoom out so that we can see our lighting and see what that looks like. Wow, very, very harsh sun, isn't it? What about the spot? Let's see the spot. Looks like it's actually going that way not really looking at our character but it still will see something yep see it's actually not facing it properly what about our change it to an area and I believe okay so if it's an area light eh, about the same as we had before now it has a little shadow that way though doesn't it okay I actually like the point best I think for at least what we're working on but let's mess around with our other part about it oh so we could actually give it a nice color if we wanted to oh we have a little preview can you move that up? oh okay that's not helpful here's our radius controlling the size of it do we want shadows I could turn shadows off so if I turn shadows off there you go so it's lit there is no shadow there you go and if you turn it back on there's your shadow gives it a little bit more drastic all right so See our custom properties we can add some it says light here's a power you can control the power of it which we kind of played around with a little bit last time we did the class custom properties add okay it's not what I'm looking for here's our shadows control our shadows let's see the spot's interesting because it looks like I can control it. Ah, okay. So if I actually, see, so how would I move that? Uh, make it rotate? Aha, all right, so let's get him in the spotlight. So now he's in the spotlight of the light. Okay, so let's look at that. Eh, not much of a difference <laughs> it's really not so 
contrast with our color shade. Ooh, what if it was uh, a glowy kind of golden day outside? What would that look like? Ah, now he's a little bit yellow, isn't he? So that's no good. So we actually want it to go back to the way it was before. I think I'll do the undo. There we go. Now that's the camera right there. Now let's play around with our camera. And if we click our camera, and we actually have our rotation, we actually have our move, so we can move our camera a little bit. And we can see our camera view. But it's interesting because I tried to move the camera earlier and it did not like moving the camera in the camera view. Hmm. So don't be in the camera view when you're trying to move the camera around. So if I zoom in a little bit, or if I want to, let's see, move it to the left. Let's see, we still got him in frame. Move, nope, move it down a little bit. What if I want to get it so he is uh, right on? you know, straight on. So let's do a straight on. So we have our camera here, and then we have to see now it's looking someplace else. So I actually have to go to my rotate and get him to rotate. And what's my view now? Nope. And then I need it to point down because the cone, whoop. Did that do it? Oh no, he's upside down. That's hilarious. All right, so let's get it to turn. I think the arrow is actually letting us know that is the, is that the top? Uh, I don't know. Okay, I don't think that's working the way I want it to. Okay, so we have it point down, left a little bit. All right, let's look now. It's kind of working. I'm like down a little bit. I want it to be more head on. So let's move him down. There we go. It's a snowman selfie. All right, so we need to move him to the left. And then down a little bit. And there you go. Maybe back a little bit. That's a little. There we go. So now we can do our render. Ah, interesting. We still have some shade going on, don't we? All right, so if we actually turn here, because it is up there to the left, so if I actually choose the light, and I move the light here, and then I actually rotate it. There you go, there's your spotlight. All right, now let's do our render. There you go. So there's kind of... A little bit of shadow may or may not like that. You can turn the shadow on and off. How about we make it a little brighter? Because this would be a bright, sunny day, shouldn't it? All right, so we choose our light. Let's give it a little more power. What is it at? A thousand. What about 1500? All right, let's render that. There we go. It's a little bit brighter now. And there he is. <laughs> let's 
see. And I'll move it down. And I'll rotate. Believe it or not, the rotation, rotating the camera makes a little bit more sense than using the, um, the camera, which is kind of strange. So render, there you go. I think that looks great. Mr. Snowman. All right, so we're kind of coming to the end of our class here. And like I said, we can talk about saving our image and everything, clicking up here to image, clicking save as, and then you can choose whichever format that you really want because those are available. The PNG ones are, JPEG, anything like that. So whatever your project is, you can render it that way. Um, I'm trying to think of any other questions. Does anybody have any questions before we um, come to our end of class? This is a fun project. I hope you enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed it too. I could very easily see, um, you know, maybe even creating a little house or something in the background for Mr. Snowman. Um, I, could, I could do that real quick. That would be kind of fun since I have a minute here. Let's see. So... So I wanted to, uh, uh, let's see, how could I do that? So first, I need a square, don't I? Let's add a mesh cube. All right. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Now it looks like he's like in a, a box. All right, let's move that. Go move it behind him so we have a little bit, kind of like a snow scene going on. Let's make that a much bigger, does pull it out of the ground there so it's kind of sitting on top look at our different views here hold on I need to drag it down like it's sitting a little hard to tell where the plane is or the ground is I guess you could say I'm sure that there's some calculations probably over here that I could move around to make sure it's that way um, somewhere. Okay, so if I go to my scale, hit S, let's make it much bigger because it's going to be like a house, a little snowman house. All right, let's zoom out a little bit. Look, it's not really on the plateau, so we need to drag it up. Oh. Hang on. Yeah. So if I do here, and then I should see that's our plateau right there. That looks pretty good. Now, how exactly am I going to do? Let's see. Huh. Circles, other surfaces. Oh, we can add text letters. Interesting. Let's see. Add it. Ooh, back. Oh, I can add a background image. Okay. Force field. Interesting. I bet if I take another cube and I turn it sideways, it'll look like the roof. Let's move it this way. And I'm going to move it up. And if I go to another axis, there we go. So if I take this, make it larger, hit S. Let's see. And if I turned it, Then moved it down a little bit. And if I have it, oh, I gotta make it bigger. <laughs> I 
Uh, so if we do our shoot areas, okay. So if I do it that way, oh no, that looks that looks does not look like a roof. Okay, so it's too big right now. So I got to make it smaller. It's too big. All right. <laughs> it's like I need to stretch it this way. There you go. Now, when I look at it, look a bit like a little bit of a house okay so we have our house we're going to give it a green roof so we green we choose that we'll go to our choice here we'll choose green it's got a green roof and we'll do a new color we'll make it a brown house how about that so let's choose let's see oh gave it a new color we're going to just call it brown Okay. Let's see. I'm going to do light brown. Mm. Okay. That's kind of uh, more of a red. I think that looks neat. Okay. So. It's going to be a selfie of the snowman in front of his new little house. All right, now our house needs a front door, doesn't it? Okay, so let's get us another cube. Let's see. Yeah, I think a cube will work. So let's drag it. All right, just I think right about there. It'll work for us. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And my goal is I'm going to scale it and drag it so it's a little bit taller. Maybe a little skinnier because we want it to look like a door. I'm not sure the snowman can fit in that door, so we might need to be a little bit wider door. All right, now. <laughs> Let's move it around a little bit. All right. And it's a door, so let's make it black. It's a coal. And let's look and see, is it sticking out too much? No, that works pretty good. And let's give it a door knob. So We'll actually just grab one of his coals. See, copy object. Oh, sorry. Duplicate object. And we'll put it on the left side. And let's change the color. Uh, I think, uh. Uh, orange okay I think that might work all right let's look so we oh it's just out in the middle of nowhere okay so it's got to get me moved still got to be moved and then move down And let's see. Does that work pretty good? <laughs> that's pretty close. All right, so let's look and see exactly. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I think that looks great. So let's mess with our camera just a bit, and then basically we'll be finishing up here. Let's grab our camera. And let's move it up uh, the angle. 
just a little bit. So I'll drag its angle up a little bit here. Let's see if that's what we want. There you go. It's the snowman. He's really excited. He's outside his new house. We'll save it. We'll call it. Where's our thing here? And house. He's got to have a good reason to have a selfie taken. Well, guess what? It's his new house. <gasps> He's all excited. <laughs> that looks great. Oh, maybe we need the sun. Maybe a little more sunshine going on with our camp with our uh, light. And we need to move it up a little bit more. There we go. And our spotlight can rotate a little bit. All right. Let's look at that. Oh. <laughs> it looks like he's in a scary movie or something. Oh, no. Yeah, I don't like that too much. All right, so let's see. If we... If we go about, yeah, see the spotlight moved. So if I move, hmm, so if I change, see, how should I do this? How do we change his rotation? Okay, so it's right. And maybe we need to move this back. So if we move the spotlight back a little bit, then it is the, uh, You think that the the radius would change a little bit. Okay, so now let's try that. Okay. That's pretty cool, I think. Think so. <laughs> All right, the cameras doesn't have the top of the house apparently. No, it's too high. Ah, it's too much. Just a bit. Okay, how do I do this to make it just a bit? Okay, so I got the camera. Yeah, I think it looks okay. All right, so let's try a render. And there he is. He's Mr. Snowman. He's got a nice selfie outside his new house. How about that? <laughs> All right. Did you enjoy that project? I hope so. That was a pretty fun project, wasn't it? Mr. Snowman getting a selfie outside his new house. Uh, so basically just using the basic shapes that we've covered today, you can actually create a lot of stuff. And of course, playing around with the cameras, the lighting and stuff like that. I encourage you to use some other tutorials from their website. And of course, at the last class this month, we're actually gonna be doing an animated scene. So we'll talk, start talking about doing some animation and stuff. Uh, the tutorial actually has a car driving through a snow scene, so we'll do that, and then maybe we'll do a little bit more animation too, depends on how much time we have for the project, but as you see, this one was a lot of fun, so hopefully that you'll uh, join me for the, the, the next one as well, okay? Bye, Mr. Snowman and his house. All right, so come join me for tomorrow's class. We're gonna be doing uh, the, the digital snowflakes using Python at 11 o'clock in the morning, and then at 2.30 in the afternoon, very important to come to that one. We're gonna be talking about the 
the um, in the cost increase to some of the online stuff. Also, the big one, of course, is that so our WJBF um, has actually uh, is not on Hulu anymore, and some of the other ones it may not be, and it's not on Dish. So, how can I use an antenna so I can get the local news and, of course, local programming for free and everything? So, it's very important to talk about the antenna. So, we'll talk about a lot of different options that we'll have. Uh, so, definitely come to that class tomorrow. Here's a list of other projects too, and here's our animated 3D one we'll be doing. We're doing our snowman class one more time on the 17th, so come join me for that. And then we'll be doing our uh, gadget help as well. Have an issue with the cell phone, have an issue with some kind of gadget. And if I don't get a lot of questions on that, I'll start talking about some a lot of, a lot of the free stuff that's available through the library. So we have our holiday 3D blender, which is our last class of the month. We'll animate a snow scene. So come join me for that. Our library is uh, our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Curbside holds pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details or call in the library with questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Remember, we're trying to have a we're having a subscribe drive so we can get 100 subscribers to our YouTube channel. That means we'll get our own customized YouTube address. Or you can search YouTube for GCHRL videos and it'll pop right up. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you had fun. I enjoyed this project. It's a newer project to, to me. So it, whoop, sorry. It's a newer project to me. So it's been kind of fun uh, learning about this and um, showing off Blender and everything like that. Uh, so making it a holiday, uh, you know, is, is pretty fun too. So thank you for joining me. Stay safe. Uh, have fun. I encourage you to watch the tutorials and stuff and go beyond my class uh, today. So see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>